was once told of a man who has been married to his wife for over 20 years and was very proud of how delicious his wife's food always tastes. Wherever he went and whenever he could, this man would not miss an opportunity to boast about the cooking skills of his wife. One day, seeking to prove his many boasts, he invited some of his colleagues to dinner at his house and asked the wife to make a meal. Everyone arrived as expected, settled into couches, and were patiently chatting and waiting for the food. When dinner was eventually ready and served, they were invited up to the dining table. This man was still boasting and talking about how nice the food would be. But to the disappointment of the guests and to the humiliation of the man, the meal was, very, was way too salty and the meat was not well cooked. While the visitors were still making derisive and jeering comments at the man's boastfulness, he angrily confronted his wife to explain why she could not make a nice meal this time around. Everyone held their breath and waited for a logical explanation. But to their utter, utter disbelief, the wife simply said, Sorry, my dear husband. It is because of the CBM policy on exchange rate. <laughs> As we speak right now, Many financial analysts and market participants are running regressions to find out exactly how the exchange rate made her use too much salt. Over the past couple of months, Nigerians have added to their new word, to the to their lexicon, the word recession. We have even been treated to controversial definitions and implications of this word. Yet, as with many things in Nigeria today, the diagnosis of our current economic situation, which led to this argument, is wrong. Yet, at, as it is in the medical sciences, if you cannot diagnose properly, your recommendations will no doubt be wrong as well. In reality, Nigeria's economy is currently facing a critical case of stagflation. This situation largely occurs when a country's gross domestic product is falling or stagnant, while unemployment and inflation are rising simultaneously. As recent data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics indicate, Nigeria's GDP growth decelerated by 0.36% and 2.1% in the first and second quarters of 2016, respectively. More also, the rate of price inflation for the months of September and October 2016 were 17.9% and 18.3%, respectively, while official statistics also indicate that the country's unemployment rate increased to 12.1% and 13.3% during the first and second quarter of 2016, respectively. Under these circumstances, what then can policymakers do and to whom should they turn? One logical place to look would be to the economists. Yet, the problem with this profession if you ask five economists for a solution, you are likely to get five answers, or in fact, 10, if they are all two-handed economists. I believe that this was the frustration of former US President Harry Truman when he quipped 
give me a 100 economist. All my economists keep saying on the one hand and on the other hand. Yet, if there is one thing all economists agree with, it is that stagflation is a, is a difficult condition for policymakers to deal with. In fact, some argue that no single economic policy can address rising inflation and slow growth simultaneously. Because fighting inflation may require implementing policies that might, in the short term, be inimical to economic growth, whereas expansionary policies to stimulate growth usually worsen inflation. But how did we get here? As we all know by now, Nigeria has been dealing with the effects of three serious and simultaneous global shocks, which began around the third quarter of 2014. These include the over 70% drop in prices of crude oil, which contributes the largest share of our foreign exchange reserves and the federal government revenues. Geopolitical tensions around critical trading routes in the world, including Russia and Western powers, Saudi Arabia and Iran, to mention a few. And third, the end of the quantitative easing and normalization monetary policy by the United States Federal Reserve Bank. In the aftermath of these shocks, global growth diminished significantly, while here at home, we suffered the incipient spillovers from these exogenous consequences. Given the sharp drop in oil prices, Federation account allocations to states have dropped by an average of about 2 billion naira monthly per state, which partially explains their inability to meet some basic recurrent expenditures, including payment of workers' salaries. Similarly, average inflows of foreign exchange into the CBN have fallen by over $2.3 billion every month over the last 26 months. In view of the ongoing difficulties in the economy, one question that seems reasonable would be, could we have been better prepared to deal with this downturn? I guess my answer is a resounding yes. Every economy goes through phases of booms and busts peaks and valleys, highs and lows, prosperity and difficulty. Contrary to correct policies prescriptions during times of boom, we opened up our economy to all comers and dropped all capital controls. At some point, we received more than $23 billion in hot money foreign portfolio investors in the country in a particular year. Monies that could easily evaporate at the slightest hint of an economic slowdown. Contrary to what I have heard, some commentators and armchair policy analysts assert, the size of our FX reserves and the value of the Naira critically depends on our lifestyles and on the value and types of imports we allow into this country. Imagine for a minute that 19% of the things you buy in ShopRite stores across the country are imported. The eggs, the tomatoes, the avocado pears are from South Africa. The meat is from Zambia, and the moist champagne is from Cameroon and France. In fact, ShopRite revealed in June 2013, this is what they said that it believes that Nigeria has space for up to 800 ShopRite stores and that the seven outlets it already had then sold more Moet Chamdon champagnes in 2012 than its South African stores all combined. Furthermore, Zambia-based Zambif, which operates ShopRite's meat outlet here in Nigeria, recently agonized 
that the firm's biggest worry was the growing demand on its managers. According to the owner, the company had just sent about four of its top managers to Nigeria saying, and unquote, we cannot ignore a market of nearly 180 million people. Which country grows like this? Show me one economically advanced nation that attained that exalted position, importing everything, and I will build you a bridge to the Queen's Palace. People can complain about electricity, good roads, security, etc. And that is understandable. But what does it say about our mentality as Nigerians if our foreign friends, foreign friends can come into Nigeria, find a way to get around these difficulties and outcompete us? Let me note at this juncture that every one of these developments has a direct impact on our FX reserves. When I assumed office in June 2014, our FX reserves had fallen from the aforementioned high of $62 billion in 2008 to just $37 billion. Yet, demand for FX has reached an all-time high of over $1.2 billion per week or $4.8 billion per month. What then can we do to remedy this situation? Is it our inflexibility, inflexible des destiny, or collective decision to rely so much on other countries for our basic needs? What kind of future do we really want as a people I do not think that one policy decision from any arm or agency of government can answer all these questions. But in the ensuing paragraphs, I will proffer my solutions and present a vigorous defense of the central bank's current policies, which are geared towards engendering growth and carbon inflation. Policy options. 